Hello, everyone. I want to be the first to welcome you here to our tour of the Millennium Center. I'm Greg Carlisle, the owner and person that has been involved with the restoration of the former United States Post Office and Federal Courthouse for the last 25 years. And please come with us and see some of the features of the new Millennium Center. First of all, we're entering the room here into the side lobby and the architecture that you're looking at right now began with the floors of the building, which are green terrazzo with brass inlay. And the walls of the Millennium Center are Tennessee marble that is kind of a rose gray color. As you are reviewing this, some of the features that I really like about the marble are the door surrounds. Very unusual. Formerly the office of the big guy or the postmaster here at the Winston-Salem Post Office. We converted his office and private restroom into the men's bathroom. Approaching it to always keep the renovations in context of the building. To now pointing out the windows that surrounded the workroom of the post office, you'll notice all the beautiful medallions up there in the Corinthian architecture style, and the mahogany and birch wood. The spaces that you're looking at are the flat spaces on the walls, we, or I should say, they removed the post office boxes when the post office moved out of here, and they were used in other facilities. We replaced those holes with birch wood and stained it to match as closely as possible the existing wood that was here. Other features of this small lobby area here are the original light fixtures with the three key design very much period, and of course the ceiling of the building here with the nice neoclassical uh, Beaux-Arts Revival style of architecture and the details, still the original details. As we move a little further down the lobby here, we'll note the bulletin board and this is probably where general information about what was going on with the federal government or where you might go to send certified mail and so forth. Again, this was part of the grand lobby of the building and uh, was not only a, a thoroughfare or a walk corridor to various services here, um, but also is where individual and business post office boxes were located. Moving a little further down the lobby, this is the original 1937 elevator. As you look over here, this is a protective feature of the building, and I like it very much. It kind of Opens right up, it's very much functional to this day. We maintain the elevator and we use it on a daily basis. You might also note another directory here that will guide you to the federal offices that are located, or I should say were located, on the second floor of the building, which we'll visit some of those later. The second floor of the building had federal offices such as the FBI, the United States Marshal, post office offices, and of course, the federal courts, jury rooms, judges, chambers, etc. And uh, we'll look forward to showing you some of those details. So just opposite of the elevator, you'll notice these doors here that swing out to the Liberty Street entrance, which was another way into the building. It was a Liberty Street entrance, a Trade Street entrance. Of course, notice the details here, all the original doors that we 
done everything we can to maintain and utilize the existing architecture here in the building. Now we're going to move into the grand lobby of the building. Okay, as we continue our tour of the Millennium Center, or the former United States Post Office and Federal Courthouse, I'm happy to introduce you to the grand lobby of the building. Certainly one of my favorite uh, features of the building is this lobby. You might note also the lobby, the green terrazzo floors with the brass inlay continues all the way through the lobby. Also the beautiful marble, uh, indigenous to Southeastern United States, mined in Tennessee, and the beautiful original mahogany windows, uh, not only facing the street, but also um, surrounding the mail room, which we'll be going in in just a few minutes. You might also notice the original radiators. Uh, we have continued to use steam heat in this building for the last 25 years. Recently, we've upgraded our HVAC to include some uh, more modern, fuel efficient heat. We love our radiators and plan to continue to use them here in the main lobby, particularly uh, for years to come. Um, moving forward, uh, you'll notice some of the things we did. The building is now used as a special event center, so we have the need for places for tables and so forth. And we've come in, we have our own woodworking shop here in the building. So we try, if at all possible, to use materials that are indigenous to North Carolina. In many cases, uh, materials that are from reclaimed wood. And we construct uh, tables such as this to match up. So these tables are constructed with birch, just like we filled in with birch, where the post office box is at. You notice also the architecture uh, here uh, with the windows that open for ventilation up there. You know, this building, when it was constructed, you know, very much you know, did not have air conditioning. So cross ventilation was extremely important in here. Uh, in the early days of this building, all the windows were open and allowed cross ventilation. And uh, they knew a lot about how to keep it cool on a hot summer day. And as we continue down the lobby, you might look up at the grand ceiling here, the coffer ceiling. This is all original ceiling in here. All the details, uh, we've done everything in our power to maintain. And one of the things that we've done is to simply leave it alone, meaning that we try to avoid uh, touching this ceiling a whole lot. Uh, I would say that it is pretty much intact. All of the original mundanes, with the exception of a few, uh, are in place. Uh, our treatment of this ceiling is to delicately uh, scrape it by hand and to touch it up. Uh, at this time, uh, we have no plans to do anything more than that, just to maintain its integrity and protect it from the water. Uh, again, the light fixtures you see here in the lobby, uh, we believe them to be the original light fixtures that were uh, probably put in here in 1937 uh, versus 1914. I have not been able to determine that, but we believe when this building was <coughs> renovated for its most recent incarnation in 1937, that these are the original light fixtures. Uh, moving further down the lobby, uh, you notice the windows overlooking the mail room continue on. This provided a source of ventilation and light for the workspace inside. Natural light and ventilation, very important for this building. The uh, other important uh, feature that we have in here uh, I managed to be at the auction when the original components of the post office building were being auctioned off. And uh, I wasn't quite sure why I wanted these post office boxes. At that time, I did not own the building and had not really considered that I might buy it. But I came to the auction, as I had always loved this building, and came here as a child with my father and my grandfather. 
and uh, remembered this big room uh, and saw these post office boxes and I bought some of them and decided that I would reinstall them uh, and put them back in shape and so those are one of the features that I really love with some of the original post office boxes. Many business people and individuals come here to point out which post office box was theirs and they remember coming here with their families as children. So important thing, uh, the Millennium Center nowadays <clears throat> is not so different from the post office. The post office, everyone was always welcome and the Millennium Center, we feel the same way. Everyone is welcome. So we continue the tradition. Moving a little further down the hallway or the grand lobby, you'll notice the doors are gold. Um, this is the handiwork of local craftsmen. Um, we, when at all possible, employ artisans from our neighborhood to assist us in the art direction of this building. And um, this is a perfect example of what they are capable of doing. And these were done by um, a company here in town, um, Mystic Scenic. Uh, uh, Jessica and Mary and her team did these doors uh, and this portico. When I got here, all of this was painted a mauve color or kind of a purple tone that was very popular. And the original portico, which is a cast iron portico or the main entrance to the building, was also painted mauve. So everything was mauve. And we felt the building was grand and the radiators were painted mauve. So basically we decided, hey, we like the um, brass inlay in the floor and decided that gold would be our color. And so all metal components uh, that were previously painted mauve are now gold, very special treatment. Uh, most of the painters that were here working on our uh, building are University of North Carolina School of Arts graduates in design and production. And they're not students that are getting work on the side. These are now professionals that went to the schools the last 20, 30 years ago. Uh, Mystic Scenic, O'Kelly Design Studios, two well-known design groups here in downtown Winston-Salem that have been a big part of the new direction of the Millennium Center, uh, respecting the historical aspect of the building and trying to enhance it with you know, modern techniques and make it a little more grand. As you come here, you'll notice some of the architecture here. These were the service windows for the post office where if you wanted to maybe do some certified mail or buy a money order or have some special services, we now use these as entry points to the ballroom. And now, as we enter into the ballroom, uh, interesting enough, this was previously the main entrance. This was previously where the post office boxes for major corporations were located. And, uh, you know, going through the process with the Historical Properties Commission, uh, they allowed us to open this doorway and create an entrance here, uh, keeping in uh, tradition with the uh, building uh, as close as possible to the architecture. Many of these pieces were handmade by local craftsmen to make this reflect um, having been here. Uh, entering into the ballroom, or what was formerly uh, the mail room, where the mail was sorted, uh, we now have come in and created uh, a celebration uh, environment here. Uh, the Millennium Ballroom is now what we refer to this as. And uh, with virtually very little change to the original structure in here, again, painted virtually every piece of woodwork in this room, with the exception of the 
upper windows again was painted that purplish mauve color. Other things that we did, the bumper rails that were designed to protect these columns from fort lifts and heavy, heavy carts, uh, we did a takeoff on the existing metal work from the cast iron and picked out one of the details and just made that part of the room. Another beautiful feature of the Millennium Ballroom, for that matter, of the whole building, are the um, maple hardwood floors throughout. Uh, we have recently done a restoration on the floors, not trying to make them look like brand new floors in your home, but to not lose all the characteristics of the old floors, but yet from a practical standpoint to do repairs as needed and to create an expanse of about 14,000, 15,000 square feet of maple hardwood floors. This room will, is big enough to serve dinners for 500 people. We've had very famous dinners here from the UNC School of the Arts 50th anniversary gala for over 500 people to Oprah Winfrey celebrating Mayo Angelou's 85th birthday party to George Clooney and Renee Zellweger filming the Leatherheads film in here. So the Millennium Center is used for a lot of purposes and the Millennium Ballroom has been the site of over a thousand celebrations in the last 20 years that come to mind for me. Many of them wedding receptions, corporate uh, celebrations, meetings, and of course, nonprofit fundraisers for some of our great uh, nonprofit organizations such as the American Heart Association, United Way, Forsyth Humane Society, and many, many, many more nonprofit organizations. This has been the home for their large fundraisers for years, and we hope to continue that tradition here. Um, features of this room are full-blown sound systems, specialty lighting. We built a stage in here that is capable of holding a 25-piece orchestra. We built it out of maple wood, uh, virtually identical to the maple floors that are in here in order to continue that tradition. Uh, replaced uh, workroom lighting in here uh, that was fluorescent lights hanging down low and replace that with chandeliers and here you have the Millennium Ballroom with great respect to all of the original features of the room uh, simply to set it up in such a way that it can be used commercially now and to enhance the existing architecture. All right. As we continue out and back into the lobby, more of the same in here, service windows, another set of doors, continue, same as our previous, uh, or as I like to say, the east end of our lobby. I like all of the original stuff, the original little windows here. Uh, it's easy for me to imagine standing here at this window to ask for a money order. This was a money order location, I remember when I came here, and uh, I could just imagine what it must have been like to come up and get a money order here. And uh, maybe put it in the mail to someone. Of course, as you move further down into this area, uh, you can see we've enhanced the building by putting a grand piano in here. The lobby of this building is often used for cocktail hours and parties, etc. And uh, it's a great spot for that kind of thing. Of course, we're constantly moving equipment around here. Um, we try to keep most of our equipment on wheels so it's not to damage. Uh, some things that I really like in here the bulletin boards here, the United States Civil Service Commission. So if you want to go to work for the post office, or if you want to go to work for the federal government, this is where postings were done, civil service. This was one of two original um, tables that uh, were in the lobby. For some reason, I bought them at the auction. Uh, 
I'm not knowing at the time that one day I would restore them and put them right back in here. Uh, my purchase of the Millennium Center was never really planned, it was serendipitous. I think I always loved the style of architecture and uh, all the things that went with it. I, this is the Trade Street doorway, unless you're looking at it here. And uh, another bulletin board or directory here. And another grand staircase that runs all the way up to the second floor of the building. Love the detail work on the staircase. I like the little pineapples here. We have just recently come in and done a lot of work here on this. All of the uh, stairwells, again, the metal or metal, the steel staircases were painted again that mode of color. And this woodwork was also in bad shape. But we have come in and restored the woodwork, picked up on the uh, gold again, which seems to be appropriate color uh, for the building. And uh, the same with the east side. Another feature that you might notice is that we haven't talked about a lot of the rooms here in the building uh, has dental molding, as many of you would refer to it. Uh, over the years, uh, I would say, particularly in the late 80s and very early 90s, prior to us gaining uh, access or ownership of the building, uh, the building for years needed a roof on it. And water damage had occurred and had probably caused a significant amount of damage to a lot of the dental molding. Uh, but we have made uh, molds out of silicone and then created new dental work uh, to put up and to, to repair this. Uh, one of our great uh, painting contractors here uh, in the neighborhood who actually lives right down the street from here uh, has fixed virtually all of the dental molding in the building. Uh, so, you know, if I can uh, say anything, it's truly worth it. Uh, to put that back to original if you possibly can. Uh, there are very few craftsmen around that know how to do this, but we were happy to uh, find DLC painting. Uh, Ricardo and his great team who have recently put a fresh coat of paint on the Millennium Center and uh, did a great job for us. Okay, everyone, um, now that we've been through the lobby, we're gonna to talk to you about a room that is adjacent to the lobby. Um, this room has been used for a lot of purposes uh, over the years. Um, I can remember coming here to the post office uh, 30 years ago, and actually this area of the room is where the guys were that were selling you stamps, and uh, you would be on the other side of the counter, and they would be back in here um, selling your stamps. Um, when the post office moved out, they took everything out of here that had anything to do with um, the administrative function of the post office, etc. And this left us basically with an empty room here. Um, we decided that it would be a really nice place for a bar, so we came in again and built a classic bar in here feature of the big windows. And then uh, about seven or eight years ago, I guess that must have been around 2012, uh, we had the opportunity to do a birthday party here for Miss Oprah Winfrey, who was Maya Angelou who was celebrating her 85th birthday. And um, Oprah knew about this building as did Dr. Um, Angela. And they came here and asked me to create a special feature uh, just for Dr. Angela. And we decided and thought it would be very interesting to write some of her poetry on the wall. And it started out as a video presentation of poetry. And when we projected uh, one of her poems on the wall, we were so impressed with it that we decided that we would <clears throat> reverse the imagery and simply have artists come in here and paint these poetry. 
Well, once we did one, we liked it so much that we thought we'd do another. And then the next thing I knew, we decided that we'd just cover this room up. And now we refer to this as the Mayo Angelou Bar. And it has been here now for about a decade, or close to that, I suppose. And it seems that almost everyone that comes in here really enjoys the poetry. It seems to be poignant and relevant even to today. Often when I'm uncertain about decisions I need to make, I walk into this room and after reading some of this poetry in here, I find it helps me clear my mind and allows me to make better decisions. Um, another feature of it uh, is the original vault. We have, I think it is six vaults here in the Millennium Center. And this is an example of just one of the vaults. You'll notice Barnes Safe and Lock Company, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 1906. Um, this vault, all original, all the original paint. We have uh, done everything to kind of preserve the authenticity of these vaults. However, we did get all the, all six of the vaults work. And this has turned into a, a tiny little wine storage area, or like I call it my wine cellar. Um, we have another vault that is used for spirits, another vault that is used for beer, another vault that is used for corporate archives. And these vaults really come in handy for us. They're safe, they're, they're functional, and I really, I really love to collect them. Hear that pop? Spin that lock, and bam, there we are. Locked up and safe for another day. Um, other things that you might notice in here is because originally this was a window here that had closed the business, they would pull a gate down right here and to keep it safe. Well, because we opened this up for ventilation and other reasons, this left us out here. So our good friends at O'Kelly Design Studio and Mystic Scenic came in and they did a faux marble application uh, on these walls. Very impressive paintwork, I should say. I like to tease the uh, painters that did this work and tell them that I could have put real marble up for how much it cost for me to paint this. But it has stood the test of time, and I'm sure as you see uh, on the film here, if you look at this marble and that marble over there, it's a pretty close resemblance. A very impressive uh, job done again uh, by Jessica, Jessica and Jennifer O'Kelly with Mystic Scenic and O'Kelly Design Studios. Uh, these are two local businesses we still work with to these days, and we'd be happy to share their information with you along with uh, uh, DLC Painting. Uh, those of you that are in the historic preservation, uh, these folks are used to working on historic buildings and not only have worked on my building, but numerous other historic projects, including Corners Folly in Kernersville and uh, other homes and uh, residences and commercial businesses in our historic neighborhoods. If we continue to move back out into what would have been the public area or where you came to do business at the post office, whether it was to buy money orders. Recently as 1992, when postal operations seized here, uh, this was closed in with what I would call modern uh, windows and doors. This looked very much like a typical office building of the 90s uh, uh, in here. And uh, we removed, uh, you know, all of those pieces that have been added to it and opened all of this up, opened these windows up. And we did a gold leaf treatment uh, to these columns. As you can see, uh, again, the post office seemed to paint everything either mauve or a soft purple or a pale green. And that included the columns here in the post office. Uh, our good friends came in and did a gold leaf treatment. This is a beautiful example of the Corinthian style of architecture. 
and uh, we have accentuated it. And this is our thought uh, about how to go about continuing that process, whether it be the bulletin boards, the entry to the building, the radiators, any other features here in the building. Uh, it's all about tying it back to the original light fixtures and the brass inlay in the floors and the color that's ground here for the building. So I hope you've enjoyed your visit to the main level of the uh, Millennium Center. Uh, our doors are always open and we're happy for you to visit. We'd love to have you. And we uh, look forward to showing you more of the Millennium Center. Thank you.